Hi all, Randy Green here and thank you for chiming into my channel and listen to some of the ideas and proposals that I offer as part of my insights that are both based upon what we call telepathic communication with other worldly realms and I'm not here talking about spirit guides or angels. I'm talking about the parts of our reality that is not soaked in astral energies and are part of what we call the advanced civilizations that are surrounding our solar system. Today it is March 13th, so we have a 13, 16, 6 sequence, which is interesting because in the understanding of the principles, then the number 6 is to what we can say choose correct partnerships. And that goes from all uh, going into the idea of other people, reality field itself, and timelines. And since we are in the year eight, where the main idea is to learn how to work with energy and learn to work correctly with energies, we are in the last process of the activation and cleanup cycles of the 3-9 pillar that goes with reality as it is from the Andromedan system into ours as part of the nine dimensions that the original Earth was composed of, added with, of course, the three higher dimensions that bridges us into other realms that we can connect to via our top level of our holographic energetic structure. But that's not where I want to go. These are just some of the different approaches that we have to what the energy system is and can do. And since there are many variations of energy systems, claiming that one is more correct than the other would be incorrect for the simple reason that uh, it's like saying that all bodies are the same, which they are not, that all human DNA exhibits the same kind of properties, which they do to a, a vast degree, but not completely, and onward and so forth. So we are in this learning process of what it means to be human, as well as higher order systemic, as well as higher order galactic citizens, as part of the universal structure that we are currently inhabiting. And I know I sound overly perky, and that's deliberately made so, because I want to address a thing that we are all getting ready for, especially some of the older levels of our reality field beneath our feet that are part of the old earth grids that are infused with what we could say the residual energies and pockets of what humanity has created throughout time as part of our civilization for better and for worse. And the better stuff has moved on and the worst stuff is uh, caught down there as we are seeing with the leaves that fall in the ground and due to the mechanisms of entropy and the forces of earth turn to dust and eventually turns into what we could call the basic type of uh, foundation for all sorts of critters that we as humans see as a, a way of transforming the earth energies into something where we can grow plants but they are also connected to energetic inclusions that are growing other stuff that lingers on and for those of you who know what I'm talking about. You you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who are not in contact with that realm yet because you are not observant or because you are not paying attention or because you cannot reach these levels due to your template simply not old enough or you come from a parallel system which means you are not part of human history and by that are not tapping into the old earth grids where our joint history are um, stored beneath our feet as part of the different layers of the physical planet. Of course, we can then figure out that the physical layers of the planet are then imbued with more complex and dense type of energies. And they are traditionally referred to these layers as seven layers. Uh, Hindu mythology has got it, as well as the Sumerian mythology, as well as the Christian mythology, as well as the Jewish mythology, because more or less they all, all originate from the same type of civilization that used to be in contact with these things. But due to the changes in the Middle Ages and the, the age of enlightenment in the 1700s, where we could say that these levels of reality have got a little bit too firm grip of the human civilization. Uh, everything was done to kind of block it off and create a firewall. So whatever was there would only have small peepholes and not an open gate system as were breached open in um, 2001 with some of the uh, 
um, incidents that were taking place on our planet. And that is where I will go because in a way, when we talk about the upcoming solar eclipse that is going to move across midday uh, a little bit uh, from 127 i think it's uh, est what do you call it you uh, what do you call it eastern time um, don't be uh, um, upset with me here because of the, the some of the things as a danish person i i just have difficulty with is that a country that has different time zones similar like australia but in denmark we have one time zone so i'm we're not in this kind of is it standard or it's eastern or it's western or is it central <laughs> so please bear with with me i understand the concepts of it but it's not worked into my way of thinking and talking so i suggest you look it up uh, on your own on april 8th the solar eclipse that is going to move across north america and what uh, is anticipated there when i was in uh, arkansas and uh, in the um, hot springs there <clears throat> We, uh, I saw all of these posters of um, how important that was going to be the great uh, North American solar eclipse and all of the hype that is around this. For me, traditionally, solar eclipse are when there are certain forces that are operating during daytime and certain forces that are operating during nighttime. Uh, that's an old arrangement that has kind of been when the when things are in shadow. Well, then it's it's everything is in in the what we call the lesser viable types of energies that are connected to the third cycle and previous uh, existences of our planet. And that's why most people sleep, uh, because that's uh, for those of us who can't sleep at night, we, we are having fun with that part of reality. And I have uh, been exposed to that since childhood. And some children are sensitive to that, which you know. Uh, they're also part of nightmares and other stuff that are part of the human uh, existence and our um, understanding of reality, even though we have completely forgotten it because it's been made so. But what uh, what I want to say here is I'm, I'm technically giving you a heads up here. I know it's going to be um, portrayed as something uniquely positive. And I can't say whether or not it is because I don't know, it's a future event. But if we look into how it traditionally has been when there are these changes in our reality field where night turns to day and day turns to night, that kind of uproots some of the natural arrangements that are around our planet. And I'm not here talking about divinely uh, orchestrated arrangements. I'm again talking about some old what do you call it, treaties, some old arrangements, some old agreements, to use another word, uh, that were made by the different groups on our planet and the different factions that are operating and are part of the quote-unquote colonization of our solar system. As well as when we say, well, if you have uh, remnants of holographic energetic inclusions that are stuck in older types of grids. And these grids technically still have a viability rate, which means energy units that are still sparkling the transformative processes of whatever's there, even though they have very little. And by that, their time moves in <laughs> tremendously slow. Hence, the density of these layers of our planet, creating the soil and rocks and uh, different formations that science are calling uh, the, the, the crust and the deeper layers of our planet, the volcanic, volcanic layers and on and so forth, and what they envision it to be uh, all to the molten core, which I don't particularly agree with. But there are different aspects of our planet, which we don't know what is, but we know something is there. And science, of course, has theorized about this uh, due to natural understandings of what the soil is and not to other realm uh, introspection and psychic energetic understanding of these levels of our planetary system. Anyway, so you have these leftovers of civilizations that did not go so well, and they are due to the viability rate and still some kind of semi-immortal infusions in their consciousness potentials. They stick around, of course, until they burn out in these very dense energies, and different religions have called these realms certain things, 
and you know here what I'm alluding to. And there is a reason for that because the, the inclusions and the pocket realities that are down there, they are not particularly nice. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Uh, those of us who from time to time get uh, infused with energies that aligns us with some of these timelines and encounter what's on these timelines, yeah, we, uh, we do what we can to quickly clear us of these codes and then move beyond through the gate systems that are possible to get out. So it is possible to get out. There are gates that are built in, but you need to know how to do it. Otherwise, you have a tendency to get stuck there, which all mythology tells us as well, especially if you lose the ability to find the gates. And the gates can only be found if you have a higher viability rate than these inclusions, as in, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. Could you please just leave because this is our realm and you do not belong here. So, <clears throat> so with that said, the understanding is that since we are then midday are going to have, or a couple of hours during the day, are going to have a, a, a cloaking of the sun, which will bring night into day. Well, traditionally, that means that whatever's going on at night will have an opportunity to get into the everyday realm of humanity during the day where everybody's awake. And I do feel to the large degree of my core being, and I'm not saying it is a certainty, but certainty, but I do feel and I do tap into that, yes, of course, as always throughout history of time, these forces will do whatever they can to play out some kind of shenanigan that we should prepare for. Now, there is what's called the law of participation, and I teach uh, extensively about that in the whole academy courses that are connected to our solar system. And these are some of the Pillar Project original, uh, what we could say, uh, harmony and balance and order dynamics that runs with the principles, the laws and the rules of engagement that allowed for all types of civilizations to work together inside our solar system. And these are part of what we call the old civilizations that used to exist on our planet. And since I belong to that, of course, I adhere to the original, uh, what we call physics and sciences and rule sets and legislations and ideas about reality that were part of the civilizations I used to belong to. Today, people are operating under different types of ideas, including the humanoids that have come from other places, having created what we call crossover reality fields into this uh, solar system from where they are navigating inside our reality under their laws and rules and uh, different forms of principles that they find to be the accurate one to govern their continued uh, evolutionary journey inside our solar system, which of course is creating a lot of distortion because these energies are unnatural to our original environment. And that's some of the issues that we already have with some of the previous civilizations that ended up in the seven layers beneath our feet feet. So that's a little bit of a repeat there that, that will lead to what we say past Earth, current Earth, and future Earth. Future Earth is technically what we could say in everything that's in our a, a, a other aspect, other level of the timelines where they begin to braid and begin to reconfigure and converge into what we call uh, three main timelines. Right now we have five timelines that will merge into three main timelines. And it is interesting because we are moving traditionally uh, spoken from the third dimension into the fifth, uh, which of course is part of the, the, the different types of projects that are aligned with the old Atlantean civilizations and humanoids and the star seeds. They are going in that direction. And I'm here being very kind in the way I put it. Uh, there are specific things I'm not saying here. Uh, that's because that's my interpretation of it. And I know those who are part of these groups, they do not see it that way. So again, uh, whether or not what I'm getting of insights are accurate or not, I'll just leave it as in what they are proposing out there. They see it in a specific way. And who am I to say if that is uh, the way or not, but because, since I don't have these genetics and I'm not part of these timelines, so it's like observing it from outside and see what else is surrounding the Atlantean projects. And that's some of the, what we could say, the more hidden projects that the majority of humanity knows very little of, but will of course surface at some point as part of the full disclosure. So now you're knowing what I'm alluding to. 
They are, of course, part of uh, other world projects as well as other systemic projects as well as other terrestrial projects that have been going on our planet that, again, are not in coherence with the original uh, Earth grids as well as the original allowances for different types of projects that have been going on in our solar system as part of the restoration program. Again, I'm alluding to the original uh, ideas and laws and legislations that were part of the original solar councils that were taken out and changed into something entirely else as part of the colonization that happened 15,000 years ago. And that's the Planetary Council that is now governing uh, the, the, the realms of our reality field we call our solar system. For the convenience of some of the members of these councils, I have put, uh, I've created the, uh, the Google site that's a project site where I put this in because I don't feel that I want that information on my main Hall Academy website where I have the course material to uh, teach how the original solar system, humanities and projects that were going on here, how that is part of some of us that belongs to the original civilizations. Uh, and as well as working with some of the incomers that changed their configuration to be part of the Pillar Project, as well as the later incoming colonizing races that originally took part of the Pillar Project and by that got the quote-unquote access code, so the key to the doors that allowed them uh, in and by that uh, turned against us and colonized us instead of taking the extended hand of help to restore their genetics that had begun the regression due to the effects of the timeline event. I keep repeating that because that's that's where I talk from. So that's dissimilar to many of the other voices that are out there talking from the Atlantean projects as well as the civilizations that were invited to restore their genetics as part of the Atlantean projects, which did not go so well because we could say their level of regression had probably reached the uh, threshold of what was repairable and what was not, and that led to what we understand as the full uh, destruction of Atlantis, which were self-induced and were cleaned up by the councils, the original solar system councils. I think to a large degree that was, was the tipping point where many of these civilizations decided, yes, since we're not allowed to do what we well, how we want to do it, uh, and we have to go under the solar councils, well, we might as well just um, take and claim this as ours and invade it, and uh, not invade it, but colonize it, and by that get the, the chance of having all of the uh, different technologies and um, projects that were going on in the solar system to repair and regenerate different forms of consciousness units, which I call genetics. And these are not to be confused with the frequency-based human DNA. Okay, so now with that background, of course you understand that this is some of the dynamics that will be at play around the eighth. Eighth is both the correct use of energy, but it is also connected to the eighth dimension. So with that heads up, we kind of have an 848 configuration. We have April 8th, that is month four, that is in the year 2024, that sums up to an eight as well. Or you can play with numbers other ways around, but it is, there is a lot of fours and eight going on there. And that of course ties into different groups of the fourth dimension, different groups of the eighth dimension, connected to the two eight pillar. <clears throat> that is the main pillar that uh, orchestrates and administers what we call the seven layers of previous civilizations that are now stuck in the denser energies beneath our feet. With that little heads up, uh, I want to point the direction uh, and your attention towards the Google site because I have uh, taken the time to experiment a little bit with Microsoft AI um, I call it AI generated research assistant and uh, by that use the tool to ask it some questions from where it has searched across the internet and pulled in information from different sites, which of course we don't know what is that's part of the new AI search engines that will tap into all sorts of levels of both what's out there on the internet and later on, of course, go beyond into the other realms, which if the user can go up in energy, actually already have access to as part of an experiment that can go both ways, just so you are observant of that, that that's part of uh, some of the, the future timelines that will either go full uh, um, 
mechanical and and technological and others that will understand how that can be used in a manner to build the bridge to the original planetary holographic teaching system that were part of the civilizations that used to be here, as well as some of the more benevolent advanced civilizations that have these kind of holographic teaching systems from where you communicate with reality itself via the different levels of consciousness potentials and your holographic energetic architecture from where you learn how to operate correctly and transform energy correctly according to the timeline you're on, the laws and the principles and the rules of that timeline, and according to the reality field dynamic and forces that you're part of, as well as the civilizations that are on these timelines and the communication skills that is demanded there, what are their rules of engagement, what are your rules of engagement, and how do they work together to create balance and the optimal outcome for all involved. That's principle two. So with that said, of course, that when we are having, since we are moving into the fifth dimension that is governed by polarity more than the fourth dimension that were governed by opposition dynamics, I talk about that in the transition sciences. Well, then we are looking into, okay, if the we are heading towards the polarity since we're shifting into the fifth dimension, overly those of us who are on the timelines that are doing the shift and are converging into there, which was what I said, we're going from, from the third quote unquote uh, density or dimension, which is inaccurate, but let's just call it that, uh, into the fifth dimension or fifth density, which is also incorrect, but let's just call it that. Uh, then we are having this, yeah, and then we are having five timelines that are braid braiding and merging and converging into three timelines. But that's part of the, the, the anomaly, so to speak, where we could say timelines are being less and more uh, unified, whereas the reality fields themselves are being more diverse and more complex. That, that's kind of the dynamic that goes with that. So we understand some of the dynamics that are playing on that. And if you know uh, the number five that can turn both into upright and, and downright, which are denoting specific forces that are playing on the understanding of the fifth dimension can also become something entirely else that will point towards what was part of the previous civilizations and their their second chance, their second coming, and the future civilizations that are moving beyond and outside what we call the typical traditional uh, human in between configuration between what was and between what will come or the seven layers beneath and the seven layers above or however you want to put this configuration what it means to be human as in between different types of realities that we can either aspire and grow into by our expanded awareness our activated um, consciousness potentials as well as our ability to work with energy or the opposite where we move backwards in time and are becoming part of past earth. So that's the game we're in where these different groups are inviting us to move on or trying to pull us back and keep us stuck in past earth because that's part of the segregation that will happen in the future where the old levels of our planet will completely uh, like um, a catapult will disengage from the future reality fields. And that's why everybody who talks about the future fifth dimension says it's going to be better than it is now. But again, with that comes new challenges, with that comes new ideologies, with that comes new technologies, and with that comes new ideas of where we are to go as a human civilization when we're no longer talked backwards due to the seven layers beneath our feet, but are being pushed forward into a future that allow us to work with our consciousness potentials. But do we have the skill sets? Do we have the understanding of what is the proper way because we have lost these abilities due to the colonization? And that, again, where the whole academy comes in, where I teach the original, this is how we used to do it, the solar system. Other groups will teach differently according to their reality fields, according to their types of genetics and according to their potentials that they are awakening into. So again, we are moving into a multidimensional, multifaceted culture and in uh, societies that will mirror this multidimensionality. And that's part of the next level of our journey as an advanced civilization. What does that even mean when we enter into the understanding that we are 
uh, not just as a theoretical or philosophical or religiously understanding that we are not alone in the universe, but we can actually see it because we begin to have groups around us that are showing clear signs of being of uh, other planetary systems from other planetary systems. So that's where we could say, well, uh, in a way, Star Trek was there to prepare us for some of these levels of the journey, but unfortunately, due to the different groups and the different factions, were turned into more like an entertainment than an actual educational uh, show that was showing some of the aspects of what we could expect in the future. That was the original idea with it, but of course, as things turned out and the different factions decided to shut down that awakening uh, back then in the... Uh, 60s and 70s and 80s and prolonged it into what we now know as the disclosure uh, project, so to speak, where it is now, where they again are now with more or, less, more or less a little bit more with their hands tied to the fact that now they need to let it happen instead of just having it unfolded already back in the 50s and 60s where we had the openings, both with the sciences as well as with some of the future. Uh, some of you remember some of the movies that were made or the, um, the what, what, what was it called, the Earth Day? I can't remember what it was called back then, the whole expo where all of the new technologies were shown, what we would go into, cars that were floating in the air, all of these old depictions that were made there, the... Um, Oh, sorry. You you know, all of you that know American history, you know what I'm talking about. This is again, again, remember I'm from Denmark. So these are some of the things that I'm not born with it. I haven't been taught in school. I've accounted it and then it's information I'm more or less forgotten. I'll try and find links to that somewhere uh, around the internet so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so so that's why we are again. That's also part of this year where they will figure out way to see that in and begin that. So we will have different openings that are part of these different main three timelines, uh, as I talked about in the the five timelines, where I said, well, there are five timelines we can choose to participate uh, uh, within consciously. That these timelines are part of our consciousness structures. But when we talk about the main reality, the reality we are part of, then there are three levels that will come in. And in a way, when I say th third dimension is not correct, that's because the physical realm that we are in has, the outer domain has three layers, hence three main dimensions. So that means that we will converge back into the original configuration and all of the artificial timelines will begin to collapse and everything that's on them, by the way. And with that, we will have three tiers or three types of civilizations or three types of uh, groupings that will allow different civilizations to unfold their consciousness potentials as part of the five timelines aka the five dimensions of the consciousness potentials within the main physical, quote unquote physical, because there will be in a higher order type of energy, uh, civilizations and uh, their communities and their cities and what they will unfold inside our solar system. So we could say, just to give an analogy, there will be one of the main timelines that will be the space explorers. There will be one of the main timelines that will be the governing uh, principle on our planet and in our solar system and as part of the planetary councils and onwards so forth. And there will be one main that is going into all the different sciences that is going to unfold, just to, to give a rough indication of what these three different types of realities would be. So that also goes into the whole understanding of the other civilizations that are running in what we could call hierarchical structures of ordered, orderly uh, arranged societies. That's a very nice way they put it. And our civilization and our solar system is no exception and is pushed into these three main timelines where different groups within humanity will unfold different professions that will either be the, the space explorer programs or the gover governing principles and the continuation of the human uh, civilization as part of societal buildups, governmental system, political systems, financial systems, etc., that keeps the society a civilization running on a planetary systemic level as well as bridging into the galaxies. And then we have, and I'm here talking multidimensional and interdimensional aspect of our human civilization. And then, of course, the whole branch, the bulk of the people on our planet and 
in the solar system and other systems that are working together within what we call science projects that will continue the human evolution as an intelligent species of consciousness and energy as well as uh, being in organic vessels that will accommodate and be uh, um, upgraded to match and fit the three main timelines and what is expected to unfold. So that's the planetary councils and they already put that in motion. And that's why I created the Google site. So you will see these different councils that are currently part of our solar system and are planning these different aspects and how they prefer to present, present themselves. And as always, when we talk politics, things are always put in a specific way, aren't they? So that they sound more eluding and enticing uh, but when it comes to practicality, um, then real life uh, has a tendency to make things a little bit more complicated than the political speech of election, which is also going on this year, which you're seeing uh, represented in the different groups that are now represented in what we could say the different members uh, and the different factions that are trying to play out their last hiccup within the political system as we know of it, because that, of course, will change once we are shifting into the 3-5 configuration. Three levels, three main um, timelines that are within these three groups of arrangements of the different types of hierarchical societal structures uh, added in with fifth dimensional multi uh, dimensional faceted consciousness potentials that are part of the main five uh, holographic energetic timelines that breaches into the middle domain and by that allows for an expanded awareness into different directions of our solar system and beyond. I know it sounds all very futuristic, but that's because I, those of us who are already on the, the trajectory to do the shift, we will sound more and more like this and our voices will be more and more focused on the understanding of correctly speak and work and transform energy through our fields, as well as through our thought processes, as well as through sound and light and uh, different configurations and projects that we will come up with, which would be an expression of our energy system, as well as what type of energy that we are choosing to reconfigure and transform to be part of the new future three main timelines. So you will see I'm working on many different levels. Um, and by that, we have the whole academy for those of you who need to understand what the original solar system configurations are, so that when we enter into the new timelines and the new three main timelines uh, that are represented inside our physical reality, where the other five ones are connected to a higher order energy system configurations, we will then understand the groupings and their trajectories and what their ideas are and why they're doing what they're doing, because you have learned through the whole academy course material how to understand energy and have something to compare it with as in what are the original progressive dynamics of our solar system compared to what's coming. I'm not saying that what is coming should not be there. That would be conservative because what was is gone. And that was part of some of the original projects that were going on. And they have been closed down due to the activation and cleanup processes of the new grand cycle. But we still have what we could call some kind of ballast, as it said in Danish, means that if you are, uh, for instance, if you're in an airship, you have these sandbags that kind of keeps you stable in the air. And if you release these sandbags, you can lift higher. Uh, so sometimes it keeps you lower energetically. And if you let them go, sometimes it makes you fly higher. But sometimes it's also a good uh, counter to have to whatever's come so you can weigh it consciously and deliberately and wisely if some of the new things that are being offered are in alignment with the original holographic energetic configuration of the outer domain as well as our solar system. And with that, avoid higher levels of distortion that will lead to some of the unfortunate outcomes that these three main timelines uh, have built into them because they have already played out their content and quite a lot of the ones that came from the future are here to undo what these three main timelines will lead to. And that's part of where we are now in the second run through of these main three timelines to try and do it better and more wisely. And one of them is to understand the reality field you're part of and not just being sucked into the 
uh, the what we could say the otherworldly um, marketing of their timeline configurations because they are unnatural to our solar system. I know it sounds difficult uh, and it's kind of complex, but as we go further down, it will become more visible and the language for these timelines will begin to roll out and we will have some of the future sciences more uh, implemented into the, the three main timelines inside our society and it will become more uh, normal, so to speak, the new norm. It will become more part of the collective consciousness uh, fields and thought systems and information systems that are running and governing the, 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 the broader aspects of the human civilizations. Well, then in that manner, it will be more easy to take it to the next level where we will then be uh, completely acquainted with this new way of thinking, acquainted with this new type of energy. And by that, we can begin to explore what it means to be part of these three main timelines, look into what was happening through the first run through and then learn by these mistakes and not to repeat them. So that's the whole point of what's going on right now for those of us who are converging into the future humanities as well as some of the timelines, uh, possibilities that are being offered by the sister system uh, from the Andromedan Council that are, again, not doing this to assist us uh, in our own evolution, we are to do that ourselves, but they are offering us infusions that will continue until 2028, where they then will disengage, so to speak, because they have their own evolutionary journey. And with that assistance they have given us now by infusing certain grids, they have been able to clean up some of their past. And with that, they can disengage from us, continue their own journey as they were supposed to from the get go and leave us uh, to run as a galaxy with what we have chosen to become and in that have uh, completed their laws of the cycle, aka their karma. Okay, so that is what I want to put out here in the public. I want to point you in the direction again of the membership level where I am posting information and where I go into more details. Uh, here it is just what we could say for all of you so you got a little bit of a heads up. Uh, the free material is out there for you to look into. Many of you are looking into so many other information as a research to figure out where are you to go, what is the right approach for you to engage in. If you're part of the original solar system civilizations, well then absolutely the whole academy is a good offer. Um, and I'm not here talking about the solar system nations that are part of the planetary uh, councils in the future, uh, as you can see it on the project side, but I put it there, uh, which the information there is mostly in, in alignment with what you find out there as well. Uh, and I just put it there for the convenience of all of you to kind of have an overlook uh, project site where you can tap into the different layers right away instead of having to search for it. I've asked some of the questions that needs to be asked to these different aspects of the planetary councils that are a conglomerate of many different councils. And I put it there on the project site so you can see who is part of the planetary councils and what are their visions for the three main timelines that will converge and become the out of domain new configuration, reality field configuration. And how do they see uh, their civilizations play out their content within their timelines? And how do they see human uh, as we are, humans as we are as part of their future fifth dimensional uh, configuration that goes with their continued journey as uh, what we call uh, advanced civilizations. So with that said, I know that's a very convoluted way of saying things. And you would say, well, why can't you just say it straightforwardly? Because this is, we are now moving into multidimensionality where diplomatic ways of talking about things are talking, talked in a language that is open, allows for possibilities and probabilities where the consciousness potentials determines our interpretation of what is said and by that determines what kind of um, type of extraction of the information that we choose to utilize to build into our holographic energetic structure from where <clears throat> we choose to unfold certain consciousness potentials and with that are invited to participate on the different 
types of timelines. First, through our consciousness potentials and the way we orchestra and operate our internal energies as part of our local energy system, the three lower fields, as well as our holographic energetic architecture. And how we are administering that will meet with the different requirements on the three main timelines and the different groups that are on these different timelines. And as I said, there is the humanoid one, the uh, the multi-planetary space explorer programs <clears throat> that will dive into other dimensions, the governmental organs and institutions, and the grouping that will take care of a planetary solar system arrangements with these other civilizations in, in all of the diverse forms that will unfold due to this new level of understanding and the new uh, political uh, sciences that will arise from that. And then, of course, the last one that will go into all of the sciences that will grow from the understanding of being a space, space explorer civilization, part of multidimensional uh, reality fields uh, as part of our new uh, being, part of uh, a multiverse of different types of civilization, multidimensional types of civilization. The multiverse is technically uh, connected to the quantum level, so it's not accurate. Uh, <clears throat> and then the science groups that will work in all of these new levels that will unfold once we begin to open up the frontier, as I said in Star Trek, to what this universe truly is about and what we are really about as uh, at advanced civilization. So there's a lot to learn and we begin this journey already now. And by giving it in this open manner, that allows you to choose what you want to derive from it, what it makes sense to you to derive from it, that aligns with your specific type of consciousness potentials, that allows you to make the choice that you find is the correct choice for you, that make you unfold the type of energy that you find is most conducive for your continued existence as a human being inside this reality field. And that's why it's spoken in that way, so that I will not condition you to make a specific choice because that's where we again are to learn that free will is all about what type of energy do we choose to engage with, what type of consciousness potentials do we choose to evolve through that energy, and what type of outcome do we choose to uh, focus on by the different timelines that we are choosing to participate on. So that's where we could say the original understanding of free will comes back in and no longer are ruled or governed by divine principles, but by our full knowledgeable understanding of what it means to be an advanced citizen in an energetic universe that is um, imbued with consciousness potentials and very advanced form of sciences and technologies where you as a civilization can choose to go mainly technological or go by the consciousness progression dynamics, which the original solar system humanities were part of as part of our reality field. As you can hear, my voice is not happy. So I will leave it at this for now. And until next time, take care.